with us today as we always do we'll be sharing communion together during our time of worship hopefully you've prepared those elements and they are in front of you and you have breathed in a prayer around that space because we know that where God is is holy space and God is here as we worship together I wanted to thank my friend Deb Breeden my sister-in-law Celeste Roseman for the photographs that we're using today two very talented people and I've enjoyed sharing their photos with you over these last couple of weeks. You've enjoyed my friend Donzella Marsh with, as she sang the prelude today. We're so blessed by her music and I just want to thank her. A couple of things I wanted to tell you. Our Zoom Bible studies are back and so every Wednesday night at 6.30 we'll zoom in and just share a little scripture today and check in with each other. If you'd like a link to that please let me know. And then uh, at this point Although the situation changes almost daily, but at this point, we will be back in our sanctuary for worship in two weeks on September the 13th. All the standard health guidelines in place, please wear a mask and we'll social distance and all of that, but we will be back in our sanctuary for worship uh, in two weeks and we look forward to that. So now I invite you to tune your thoughts and your attentions on God and on just being in God's presence as we worship God during this time. 
please join me in the call to worship. May the peace of God rest on our busy lives so that we may be quieted into prayer. May the love of God flow through our time of worship so that we can be energized to share it with others. May the grace of God seek out our every need and may the restless gospel set our hearts on fire. Let us now worship God. join together in prayer. Faithful and present God, you are not blind to the storms that rage in this world, the illness that threatens. Some are visible to the eye, but others are hidden in our heart. Lord, bring your refuge and healing strength. Make us still in your safety. When what seems permanent begins to crumble, when devastation ravages the earth, When powers that be claim your authority, let us remember the joy that you have set before us. Lord, help us to let go of fear and doubt. Make us still in your waters of gladness. O God, creator of time, we hurry from task to task, from crisis to crisis, carrying the weight of the world. Or in this new season, we let time pass without meaning. But the world is yours and everything in it. Let us lay down what keeps us too busy to be still and stillness that is void before you so that we may lift our eyes to your glory. Lord, we come into your presence. Make us still in you. We ask that you hear this prayer 
and the prayer that you taught us as we pray it together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the book of Psalm, chapter 46. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in times of trouble. So we will not fear even if earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. The nations are in an uproar and kingdoms crumble. God thunders and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord Almighty is here among us. The Lord God of Israel is our fortress. Every now and again you hear news stories about people who are doing something very brave, acting without any fear of what might happen. You see stories of people who are trying to do their part in today's world to bring joy or happiness to others. Stories of people protecting each other, people helping each other out. So many stories like that, that even while being bombarded with the things that are around us that weigh us down, like COVID and isolation and hatred and politics and hurricanes and wildfires, there are good news stories out there. I don't know about you, and I'm only speaking for myself here, but I have to be very intentional about finding those good news stories. It is so easy to get weighed down by it all, and sometimes it feels very heavy. Being intentional about finding the good is not always easy, but it's what we're called to do. It's what we must do to get through these times. So I had recorded one sermon for today, filmed it in the sanctuary and all. It was a fluffy thing, not a lot of depth. And I listened to it back and I thought, I can't cover up this challenging time with such fluffy nonsense. The hurt is real. The challenges are real. And we are all facing them in some way. And so I woke up this morning and I realized that I had to redo the message and I just kept saying over and over, God, what, what, what do you want me to say today? What message can I possibly give to bring some hope? And the scripture verse that kept coming back to me over and over again was Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. It is so easy today to let fear overtake us. Fear is a normal human emotion and for whatever reason it seems to be the one that comes to the forefront very easily. Fear. These days we seem to experience it almost daily to a lesser or a greater degree and it seems so easy to let fear come right to the forefront so quickly. And it honestly takes intentional thinking to back it away. There is fear. There must be ter tremendous fear in a parent's heart as they send their child to school uh, in various ways, whether they send them online or whether they send them in person. There's fear in terms of what the next couple of weeks are going to hold with the COVID virus as schools and colleges try to return to some sense of normalcy. There's fear every time you go to the doctor's office. There's fear 
every time you have a cough or a sniffle or a headache. There's fear that our nation is being pulled apart to the point of not being able to be put back together. And in the middle of all of that, the verse that kept coming was Psalm 46, 1. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. This psalm was actually written as a hymn to be sung in the context of worship. Much like our hymns are sung today, you can almost hear its melodious tone. In fact, this scripture is the verse on which a very favorite hymn is written, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Imagine this Psalm 46 being sung by people in worship. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea and the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, but God lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. These words bear repeating over and over and over again. Fearful things will happen. Fearful things are happening. But of this you can be sure. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Note the word ever-present. Didn't Jesus also make that promise? I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What can make you more sure than that? to the very last minute before this world disappears or before we take our last breath, we have those words, I am with you always. So let us give thanks that we have a God who never abandons God's people, but always lovingly watches over them. Because it's true. These are words that you can take with you today and for the rest of your journey. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Thanks be to God for that incredible gift and for these beautiful and amazing words. Please join with me at this table of communion. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we use this moment to take a deep breath, to refocus our hearts and our minds on the work of the Lord. Sometimes it is difficult to quiet our minds and give our worries up, but this is the time we give ourselves to you. Lord, this time is so special when we focus on the true gift that was given to us. 
the cruel death of your son on the cross, that we might have our sins forgiven. As we take of the bread and the cup, we know that they are but symbols of his broken body and spilled blood. His death that we might have, life eternal, if we only believe. We ask that you walk with us today and every day as we strive to more fully reflect on your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And on that night in the upper room, he took the bread, broke it, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, saying, This is a new covenant in my blood. Drink all of it in remembrance of me. Please join with me now in communion. God sends you forth to be ambassadors for Christ. God looks for anyone who will lift instead of lean, help instead of hinder. Go to claim a corner of the world for God, and may God's Spirit go with you and abide in you. Amen. <laughs>